Okay, we're still learning how to operate this equipment here, folks. <laughs> Obviously, right? Okay. How is everyone, what is that again? They are. That's all that we could, that we could hear was, huh, was your drums. You were doing a solo, you didn't know it. So, <laughs> they heard a solo. Anyway, so, all right, so where are we at again? First John. We're moving along here, aren't we? We're, we're, we're making progress here. This is, this is good stuff. So, um, okay, so everyone can hopefully hear me on Facebook and in this room. So let's, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word of God that reveals your love. We thank you for coming out of heaven and demonstrating your love on the cross and that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet your enemies, that you died for us in Romans 5.8 and Romans 5.10. And uh, we just ask you, Lord, just to bless these words, bless this Bible study now, Lord, in our prayer time afterwards. We pray now in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so who can remember anything from last week? Some points that maybe we went over, because it's kind of good maybe to do a review, and then we'll move on. We, gotta, we kind of go forward, then we go backwards, then we go forward a little bit more, then we go backwards, go forward a little bit more. So, test the spirits. That was like two times ago, but yes, test the spirits. <laughs> but that was good, but we, we did, we went over it again last week. So what does that mean to test the spirits? What is, what is that? That's in, that's in uh, 1 John 4, 1, test the spirits. What, is that, what does that mean, testing the spirits? Who knows? To see if they're of God, right? You test the spirits because there are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. So in other words, people speak and they say things, but the source of what they are speaking doesn't come from God. It comes from another spirit. It comes from somewhere else. And so there are false doctrines. There are things that are, that are, that are, that are false because they don't come from God. And, and generally, what happens is, is because Satan uses the old sin nature as a means of deception. Like it says in 1 Timothy 4, 1, or 1 Timothy 4, they will heap to the, after their own lust, they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their, they shall turn away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So see, this is what happens. Um, but if we what? If we walk in love in Ephesians 5, 2, right? If we walk, if we walk in the spirit in Galatians 5, 16, like we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in love. God is light. And so if, if, if we, if we like 1 John 1, 5, God is light. And, and if we walk in the light as he is in the light, God is, God is light and in him is no darkness at all, right? This is what it says there in 1 John 1, 5, at all. The Greek word is eudemia, okay? Um, it's, I don't know if, how to spell it, O-U-D-E-M-I-A, I think, eudemia. It's a compound word. It means in but, not one. It means or and not one. It means not one thing about God is darkness. So if there is darkness at all, it's not from God. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Okay? We're about to get into about God is love. Um, we also went through in verses 4, 5, and 6, you are of God, and who is you are of God? The readers of this epistle. They were second generation Christians. They had never seen Jesus before, right? They had never seen him. They only heard. They heard what, what John the Apostle had told them and what the other apostles had told them. It says, you are of God. They are of the world in verse 5. Who's they? The false teachers. The false teachers. That's why the Bible tells us in 1 John uh, 2.15, to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, 
the love of the Father is not in him, right? So because you can't love the world and love God at the same time. It's not possible to do so because the flesh is enmity against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh in Romans chapter eight. The two are contrary one to another. So it's not possible. So that's why the Bible says in Romans 8.8 8, that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Because what pleases God? Faith. Faith. Yeah, faith. And so a faith that works by love. Galatians 5.6. And this is interesting here because we have been talking about all this time, like 1 John is kind of like, it's it's. It is about fellowship. It is about, it is about fellowship with God. And, and like the first part of 1 John is about, it, 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 it emphasizes that God is light. God is light. We walk in the light. God is light. We fellowship with the light. We have fellowship with God if we walk in the light. And, but then we're about to get into a whole section on here about God is love. God is love. And we should love one another. So the, the last parts of the book are about God, God is love. And so if we walk in the light of God's light, if we walk in God's love, then whose life do we have? His life. And that's what Jesus was all about. Jesus came, what, that you may have life and life more abundantly in John 10.10. 10. That was his purpose in coming. His purpose in coming was to, to, to save the world from their sins to pave the penalty of sins of the world, but it was to come to give us life. Whose life? It was like, it was this love that we had never known about. It was a mystery. It was, re, it was concealed. It was not known. The, uh, the um, Jews did not know about it. It may have been touched upon maybe in the Old Testament, but it really wasn't really known. And Jesus came and he demonstrated the love of God for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us in Romans 5.8. That while we were yet his enemies in Romans 5.10, like, like the, this was the love of God. Like while we were dead in our trespasses and in our sins, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, with his great love, he loved us, Ephesians 2.6. So it goes on and on. This, it's the love of God. And if we understand the love of God, if we, if we love one another, then, then it's, we love one another with his love. It's his love that we have. It's not our own love. I mean, our own love can be kind of like, well, I love you because we like to go fishing together. We like to go biking together. We like to do things, and we have this mutual interest. But the love of God is different than that, it is way different than that. It, 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 it expects no return. But God's love produces a work, and it produces a return. And the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 1.8, like in Peter also, he wrote to believers who maybe had never seen him, right? And he says in 1 Peter 1.8, he says, he says, he says uh, though you've never seen him, yet you love him. And you rejoice, and in, in, in believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable. So love produces something. Love is effectual. It has a work that it does, and it, it produces joy. That's the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. It is what? It is love. The first thing it says, the fruit of the Spirit, it is love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, right? Against such there is no law. That is the fruit of the Spirit, and fruit takes time. Like, it doesn't happen overnight, you know, I mean, maybe we understood a little bit of it whenever we received Christ as our Savior, you know? I mean, so, so you, you might think, well, why does a loving God, why does a loving God send someone to hell? But the truth of the matter is, is that he doesn't send them to hell. They, we are already on our way to hell already. And, and, and because we chose love, then we chose eternal life. It is like the, in the, those that go to hell, they reject the love of Christ. That's what it is. He, he, he died, he paid for the sins of the world. We see in the Old Testament, like we see like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, shadows, what do you call it? It is like, in other words, like in Genesis 22, where it talks about like Abraham, God told Abraham to offer up his son Isaac. And we read the story. How many have read the story before? that Abraham would offer up his son Isaac, and he says, take your son, your only son, your only son. Well, there was another son, wasn't there? Ishmael. There was another son. But as far as God was concerned, is that this is the son of promise. It was Isaac. 
And Isaac carried his own wood, just like Jesus carried his cross, you know, up, and, and up, up to the altar. And Isaac willingly laid himself down. I mean, he was a young man, and, I, and Abraham was an old man. You think he could have got away from Abraham? Easily. He could have easily got away from him. You know, it's like Jesus willingly laid his life down for us. So we see these types and things in the Old Testament. Um, so anyway, so and then, okay, so we didn't finish here. You are of God, they are of the world, and we are of God in verse 9. Who is we? Him and the other apostles. Him and the other apostles. Now, does everybody follow this? Does this make sense? And, and, and it's like in the, the you and the they and the we, they are emphasized in the Greek. And it's hard for me to explain how. But it just, but trust me, they are emphasized in the Greek. You know, do, 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 you, do you know what I'm talking about? Like when you read it in the Greek, it is like the word, well, in the, 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 seven, the seven, eight, and nine. Is, uh, where are we at here? It says, um, I'm sorry, four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. Yeah, four, five, and six. Right there, it says, they are of the world. Now, in the Greek, like, what, it, it, the, the they is emphasized. You, it, it, mean, it, it means as for, as for you, as for they, and as for we. It's just another way of saying it. It's hard for me to explain it, but I can show you in the Greek. Okay, so now let, let's move on. Let's move on here to verse 7. And if we have, if that's um, confusing you, we'll, we can talk about it later. So in verse 7, it says, beloved. Beloved. It starts out like this, beloved. It means the word is agapatos, which sounds like what, what word? Agape. That's where the word comes from. But agapatos means that like, it means beloved ones. It means the divinely loved ones. Ones that are loved by God. Just like, what did John say about himself? He was a disciple whom Jesus loved. That was his viewpoint of himself. He was a disciple whom Jesus loved. So he says beloved. And so ones who are loved by God should love one another. They should love one another. Because why? Because love is from God. And so it says here, let us love one another. Now it's let us love here. It's a present active subjunctive in the Greek. Okay, subjunctive mood is a mood of what? Uh, it's what's that? Wishes. Wishes. Okay. 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 Yeah. Like yeah. Desire. It means it means it means it means uncertainty. Like subjunctive is uncertain, whereas indicative mood, which is the opposite of the subjunctive mood, it means it is it is. Um, uh, it is a fact. It is a fact. A mosquito was just flying in my ear. It was a. Mos it was means a fact. You know. Let's talk about that later. Okay. So it says, "Beloved, let us love one another." Okay. Um, let us love. It's subjunctive mood. It means. It means. It means this. Um, it's a present, it means we presently do it. It's translated correctly. Let us love one another. It is the correct translation. It's the correct way to say it in the Greek because, because there is an uncertainty there. Let us love one another. It is one another. It is this reciprocal love that we have. What is the church? What if we loved one another, okay, and it was the divine love of God and God was here do you think that God's hand would be on the church? Do you think that maybe in Psalm 133 that God would command a blessing in Psalm 133 if, the, if we dwell together in unity? I think he would. Do you think that the presence of God would be here? It was kind of like, you know, how like the, um, in the, um, the, 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 the Africans, the, uh, or there's some tribes, they, they beat the drums to summons the spirits. They're summonsing the spirits, you know, as they beat these drums and they summons the spirit. What if we loved one another with God's love? Would that summons the spirit of God? Would the spirit of God be here? I think so. I think so. Don't you think so? 
I think so. I think that the presence of God would be here. That's why divisions and things like that, the churches have division, it's not of the spirit of God. You know, there's the people have arguments in church about what, what color carpet they're going to have. And they end up having like a big discussion about it. And they end up, you know what I mean? So a little stupid stuff like that, you know, it's like, but we have bigger things to, to argue about, more important things, you know, if there is an argument, you know, it's like, we love one another. Seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, right? By, by obeying the truth unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently in 1 Peter 1.22. It's like, in other words, you purified your souls in what? Obeying the truth. What was the truth? It was the truth that set you free. In John chapter 8, verse 31, like, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And what is his the commandment? This is, this is the love of God that what? It is a supernatural kind of love. In Jeremiah 31, 3, it says that, that, it, is, that, it, 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 that it is a love that is, um, where are we at here? It is, it is, I'm sorry, it is an everlasting love, Jeremiah 31, 3. It is, it is an unhypocritical love in 1 Peter 1, 22, in Romans 12, 9. Uh, it is a great love in Ephesians 2, 6. And this love is perfected in us when we keep his commandments in 1 John 2, 5. What is perfected? Teleos. It is perfected in us. Uh, it, it, his love is perfected in us what, what, when we love one another in 1 John 4, 12. This love is perfected in us. And what does perfect love do? It's effectual. It, what, it casts out fear in 1 John 4, 18. Is everybody following? It's like it casts out fear in 1 John 4, 18. So um, it says, beloved, let us love one another for what? Love is of God. Love is of God. Love is of God. That's the reason why we love one another, because love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. So what does this mean? Everyone that loves what is born of God, it's in the perfect tense. What's perfect tense? It's an action. It can be in the right. It's an action that took place in the past and has continuing results. Okay, or it could be, you could say maybe it's like a present tense verb, but it's based upon past actions, you see? Um, in other words, like if, I, if the door, we open the door, and the door is still open. You are born of God, and you are still born of God. You have been born of God. He gives you eternal life, and you shall never perish, in John chapter 10, verse 28. You shall never perish. It's an everlasting love in Jeremiah 31.3. It says, and he knows God. Now, the word knows here is gnosko. Gnosko. It means what? Knowledge. It means, it means an experiential knowledge. It means a learned knowledge. We learn this love. We learn it. Uh, this is interesting here. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Real quick, just keep your finger right there because we're going to come back to it. Ephesians chapter 4 in verse 17 It says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord. And this is a really great passage of scriptures here about how sin deceives, how sin is deceptive here, and how it deceives us and brings us and draws us away from God, draws anybody away from God. Because why? Because sin is different than God is. God is love. It's, it, is, it is opposed to God. And so it says, it says, this I say then, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Wow. Their understanding is darkened. They're what? They are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. And in verse 19, it says, Who be in past feeling, which means they have no feeling. They are like, it is, it is this um, uh, 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 callous, uh, callous over type of feeling. In other words, it's like 
Like they're, they're, they have no senses. They're like, they're, they're insensitive to the things of God. It says they are past feeling. It says that, that they have given themselves over to lasciviousness. It's interesting because in Romans chapter one, it talks about it too. It says God gives them over to the lust of their flesh to do those things. In other words, that this, is, this can happen to us. This kind of deception this is why the Bible says to guard our hearts, to keep our hearts with all diligence in Proverbs 4.23. That's why the Bible tells us in Jude 21 to keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. This is so important for us. It says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Now look at this. But you have not so learned Christ. You have not so learned Christ. The word there learned is mantheno. Mantheno. M-A-N-T-H-A-N-O. I think that's the way you spell it. Mantheno. In other words, it's from the word matheo. It's the root word is matheo. How many have heard of this before? Really? Okay. So matheo. So uh, I think it's where the word mathetes comes from which is a learner, but Matthew is the verb, which means to learn. So you have not so learned Christ. It has to do with the student. This is the student. Okay, the student is receptive towards the things of God. The student has a desire to hear and to learn. Like you can have a great teacher of the Bible, but if the student isn't meek and humble towards the things of God, there's no receptive, there's no reception. Towards the, towards the word of God. So, uh, it, so that's why the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 2. It says, as newborn babes to desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And who knows what the next verse is? What's that? No, that's Ephesians. I think you're thinking of Hebrews 5.14. Yeah. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, if you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, in other words, you tasted that the Lord was gracious. There was something about God. It was a desire. That's why you wanted to learn. You wanted to learn more. You know, it, and it doesn't mean like the verse doesn't mean that 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 it's it's not a verse for baby Christians. It means like a baby who desires to have milk like every four hours, right? The baby needs milk like every four hours. It means, and they desire that milk. That's why they cry because they want the milk. So it's like in the same thing with us. We should have that same kind, same kind of desire for the things of God. Well, the love of Christ is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given unto us in Romans 5.5. 5. This is supernatural. This is a supernatural kind of love. It's because of the spirit of God who's in us. And what does the spirit do? He points to Christ. That's the, me- that, that's the ministry of the spirit. He points to the things of Christ. So, so what else does it say? It says, verse 20, you have not so learned Christ. In verse 21, if so be that you have heard him. Who? Jesus. You have heard him. Who is your teacher? Jesus, who is your teacher? He's the Holy Spirit, right? Like we have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. But your teacher is the Spirit. Well, what does the, teach, what does the Spirit do? He points to Christ. So you learn the things of Christ. You have not so, and, 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 the, and it says right here, it's, 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 in, it's in the active voice. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught, what? By him. So have heard, have heard is in the active voice and have been taught is in the passive voice. It says who by him, as the truth is in Jesus, Jesus is your teacher. You actively heard the word of truth. You actively heard and then you were taught passive voice. Passive voice means we receive the action, right? Active voice means we perform the action. Active voice means that the subject of the verb performs the action, Passive voice means the subject of the word receives the action. So in other words, actively, like we, act, we become hearers of the word. We obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered unto us. And then Jesus is our teacher. Does this make sense? We have heard of him. We have been taught by him. And then it says, if you read on here, it says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, 
which is corrupt according to the what kind of lust are they? Deceitful. Deceitful. That's what sin does. It causes deception. In Hebrews 3.13, it causes deception. It is, it is destructive. It is hurtful. In 1 first, in, uh, uh, first Corinthians 6.9, it is, uh, it, 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 that, that uh, God, it says in Proverbs 8.36, that he that sins against me wrongs his own soul. He wrongs his own soul. Abstain from fleshly lust that wars against the soul in 1 Peter 2.11. I mean, we have to preach it this way because, because that's what sin does. Yes, Jesus paid for our sins. He paid for the sins of the whole world and you're going to heaven because of a gift of God. But now, like Jesus came to set us free from the power of sin. We have been saved in the past from the penalty of sin and we are being saved from the power of sin. Now, while that's why we have a church. That's why we have a pastor teacher. That's why we have a church where there is love, where we love one another. Because love brings us into true knowledge of God. That's why uh, Paul the Apostle, he prayed this for the, for, the, for the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 3. That they would know what? The height, the depth, the length, and the breadth. What is it? That they would have full knowledge of God. And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Surpasses knowledge. I mean, that's what it is. It's like, that's why I see knowledge puffs up, but love builds up, right? Like if people, people can be puffed up with all their knowledge of the Bible. Have you ever met somebody like that? I've met pastors like that. that they were puffed all up with all this knowledge. And they're like, yeah, I know Greek and blah, blah, blah. It's like, who cares? Do you love people? You know, do you love people? That's the thing. You're like, yes, we want knowledge. We should, we should, we should, though it cost you all you have, get knowledge. Get knowledge. But it's like, but yeah, but, but what does it say in 1 Corinthians 13? That it's useless without love. I'm just a clinging symbol. I'm a tinkering brass. If I don't have love, like it's useless. And when we get to the Bema seat, uh, in Romans 14.10, it'll be burned up as wood, hay, and stubble because it wasn't done by love, you see? But see, this something we have to know is like it's not our love. It's his love. It's his love that we have. We receive it. We love him because he first loved us, right? And so, and so what does it say here um, in verse 22? That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? In Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed, suskimatizo, and I'm not going to try to spell it. S U S S C E M A T I Z O or something like that. Suskimatizo, right? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, metamorpho, where you get the word metamorphosis. Be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Wow. It's like, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man. It's like you take off like clothing and put on new clothing. It's like, you, that's what it brings out in the Greek, that you put on the new man. Which what? Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It is created what? After God. It is after God. It is the new creation. It's like it's who you really are. You know, it's like it's not that you try to become something that you aren't. You already are this. That's why you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are already this. You are already righteous. I am already righteous. Second Corinthians 5.21. He became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are made righteous. We don't become righteous by doing righteous things. So that is an amazing thing. That's contrary to what any other so-called religion teaches. They teach that you have to do this, you have to be that. Otherwise, you're not accepted by God. You have to attain to this certain thing. But we already are who we are because of Christ. We already who are who we are. You know, uh, and so let's go back to 1 John chapter 4. Okay. 
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 8, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now notice it doesn't say that he that loveth not is not born of God and does not know God. It just says he knows not, not God. Because is it possible that someone can be born again and not have love in their heart? Very much possible. And very often happens. You know, it's like they're born again, but they don't love God. You know, they don't love God. They don't love, they, they don't care about the things of God. They don't care about learning. They don't care about, but they're saved. They got the free gift of eternal life because it's a free gift. It just says they don't know God. It doesn't say they're not born of God. Because what? Because what? God is love. So why? So if they know God, God is love. And why they would love one another. And this is the manifestation. This is what Jesus said. He said that, uh, we'll have to look at the verse. It says, he says that, 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 that to love one another, because how can you love your brother? How can you love God who is not seen if you, lo if you can't love your brother who is seen? You know, it's like we see each other and we love one another and this has manifested the love of God. What did Jesus say in John 13, 30, 35 or 34? He said that a new commandment I give you that you love one another. As I have loved you to love one another. What? As I have loved you. As I have loved you. This is like, in other words, like this is how we learned it because he loved me. As I have loved you, now you love one another. And by this, all men shall know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In John 13, 35, the next verse. This is the testimony. This is the witness to the world that it's the truth. Because your religion, and I hate to say it because we know that Christianity is not a religion, you know, but, but, but for us to maybe understand it is like your religion, it works. It works. You have love. You have joy. You have peace. It is effectual for you. It works for you. Why? Because it's his love that we have, and we love one another. And then if we go on to verse 9, it says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. What, what verse does this kind of remind you of? John yeah, John 3, 16, exactly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's like, wow. It's like, in this was manifested the love of God. In other words, it was a love that was concealed. It, was, it had to become manifested. It was, it was hidden but not seen. And so now the love of God is seen when we love one another. We can see it now. It is invisible. God is invisible. The love of God is invisible. It was not known, but it was the mystery that was, that was given to Christ. Like what, like what Jesus said in John 1.18. He says that no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. And the word declared is, what word? I've said it a lot of times. Ex, exegiomai. Exegiomai. Right? And it's where we get the word exegesis. Exegesis, which is what? To bring out the full meaning. So Jesus was the full meaning of who God is. The full meaning. In other words, like, like God revealed himself through creation. And creation revealed that there was an eternal God, who was an all-powerful God, and a God who was able to give us eternal life. But Jesus came and demonstrated the love of God. What, like, and, and it was unhypocritical. How was it unhypocritical? Well, he died for us on the cross. It was manifested, it was shown to us, the love of God, that he died for us on the cross. And something happened to his disciples, didn't, didn't they? Because they were, they all ran from the cross except for John. Because John was what? The disciple whom Jesus loved. No wonder he stayed there. He understood about the love of God. He understood that Jesus loved him. And so, but the, the other disciples, they were afraid and they ran. Because they thought they were going to be captured too. But historically, 
the disciples, they died, they died uh, martyr's death. It's not written in the Bible. But, but, but Peter, he was crucified upside down. James was beheaded, right? Paul was beheaded, I think, right? So it, or it stoned, right? Okay, so, so, what, so something happened to these guys because they had nothing to gain by losing their life at all. They had nothing to gain for, by going and preaching about Jesus because that was going to bring them persecution by doing that because they had seen the resurrected Lord. That's what had happened to them. They seen him resurrected and they were going around and preaching this. They were preaching about it. And, and it's like, and people were believing and it was like, and the church was spreading like wildfire as a result of it. Um, it says, okay, so in verse nine, it says, in this was manifested the love of God, what? Toward us. Toward us. This love was manifested. It was directed toward us. It was, we are the objects of his love. Think about that. I mean, you are the objects, you are the object of his love. That's amazing, isn't it? He loves you. He loves you. If you were the only person that ever lived in the whole world, he would love you and he would have died for you. For you. Sometimes we got like this idea, well, well he died for everybody. No, he died for me. Yeah, he died for everybody, that's true, but he died for me. He loves me. He's my savior. Jesus is my savior, you see? That's why we do all things heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Like our ministry is unto him in Colossians 3.23. You know, we preach about Christ and him crucified. It's not about Greater Grace Church Clearwater. It's not about Greater Grace World Outreach. It's about Jesus. Like our ministry is about Jesus, you know, we lift up Christ and Him crucified in John twelve thirty two. I mean, I mean, I mean, we 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 lift up Christ and He will draw all men unto Himself. That's what I meant to say. He we 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 lift up Christ and He will draw all men unto Himself. That was the promise. So we lift Him up. We talk about Christ. We talk about His love. We talk about His light, and and we talk about His life. And this draws people to him. This draws me because it's a reality. And the Bible becomes to life for us. And, 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 it, be, and it becomes life for us. Um, it says, so in this was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. Now think about that. He sent his only begotten son. The word, the Greek word is monogenos. And I think you spell it M O N O. G E N O S. I'm not sure how to spell it exactly. It's something like that. So, so mono, mono, am, I, am I saying it right? Do you have it written down somewhere? My, monogenos. So, we're going to try to figure out how to do better with the Greek words here. So, monogenos. So, in other words, what does it mean? Only begotten, only unique one. His only begotten son, whom he loved. He loved the son. The father loved the son. I mean, the, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, the, the Word was with God. The Word was with God. The Word is pros, that means He was with God. The Father and the Son, they loved each other throughout all of eternity past. And whenever the Son was on the cross, He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was the only time in all of eternity that the Father and the Son were separated because the Father couldn't look upon sin. And the Bible tells us in, in Isaiah 53.10 that it pleased the Father to bruise the Son. It pleased Him. Not that, not that it pleased Him that He went through the suffering and things that Jesus did, but that the result of it would be that we would be saved. Because His justice and His love were both met on the cross. God's love and justice were both met. His justice, it was important. This was necessary. His justice had to be met. He couldn't just wink at sin and say, hey, it's okay. I love you. Come on in. No, the penalty had to be paid. If you, that's why the, the Old Testament is all about the law. It's all about the law. It's all about the commandments of God. It's all about following God. You can't even pick up sticks on the Sabbath or you'll be stoned. That was how strict the law was, you know, in the Old Testament. There was a man who picked up sticks on the Sabbath and they, they, they were to stone him to death. Could you imagine that? Stoning your own kids to death, your own family to death? Yeah, they still do that. But, but, but Christ came, they do still do that. But Christ came and he 
demonstrated the love of God for us. Um, so anyway, so here it says, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son, his only unique one. There was no one like him. It was the son that he loved, his beloved son. God sent his only begotten son into the world, what, that we might live through him. Wow. Wow, that was the purpose, that we could live, that we could have life. That's what Jesus said in John 10, 10, that I came that you may have life and life more abundantly. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In Galatians 2, 20. So the life that we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God. The just shall live by faith, by his faith, it says in, um, it says in uh, Habakkuk 2.4. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by faith in Romans 1.17. The just shall live by faith in uh, Hebrews 10.38. The just shall live by faith. In other words, like, because, because so... That's it. We live by faith, but what faith is it? It's a faith that works by love in Galatians 5, 6. A faith that works by love. Energeo is the Greek word. Uh, it, it's, it, it means it's effectual. It's where we get the word energy. Energeo. It's like it's a faith that works by love. And so the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. This is the work of God. And so what happens when we love one another? We have, we have this divine love between us. You know, it, we have a church and we don't have this club. We don't have a club that we go to. And we go, yeah, I, go, I, I belong to that club. I belong to that church. No, we're like, we are, it's, it is this li living organism, a living organism where every joint supplies and he's given us gifts of the Holy Spirit. And what are the gifts for? So that we can love one another. That's why they are divine gifts. They are the gifts of the Spirit. They are for the edification of the body of Christ so that we have special ability now that we never had so that we could love one another. That's why that the gifts were not given for the edification of self. That's why the he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Paul wasn't saying that was a good thing to do. If you read the Corinthians, that's 1 Corinthians 14, is if you read them, they, like Paul was not commending them on their walk with God at all. It was a rebuke. It was a letter of rebuke. So he was rebuking them on their misuse of the gifts. They were misusing the gifts. They were, they were being all proud. Oh, I got speaking tongues, and I got prophecy, and I got, I got this, and it's like, I got this gift. It's like, and you see that a lot of times in certain churches today. It's all about them. Like, our gifts are not about us. Our life is not about us. It's about him. And so that's why the Bible says to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus in Philippians 2.5. What was the mind? The mind of humility. The mind of not thinking too highly of yourself, not thinking too lowly of yourself either, because that's a false humility. Oh, I'm no good. I'll never amount to anything. Like, I, like I'm nothing. That's not true. That's why it's called pride. That's actually a form of pride, because it's not true. That's why the Bible says to that uh, to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, right? In, first, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, to cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Like, what is that? Like, well, I'm no good. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you're worthy. The Bible says you are complete in him, in Colossians 2, 10. The Bible says you are righteous, just as righteous as Jesus in 2 Corinthians 5.21, just as righteous as Jesus. That is an amazing truth. We walk in it, you know, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There it is, bring into captivity every thought. I mean, this is what the Bible teaches. And so we live through him. We have to live through him in, this, in order to live this life that we have. This becomes a testimony that the world sees that we have his life. And people, they want that life. They want to have, enjoy the life of Christ. So amen.